Okay, good morning. Uh, well, I want to start with thanking the organizers for uh, putting me in this program, uh, and it's obviously a great honor, uh, both because of the occasion uh, for the celebration, but also, as we just heard, uh, uh, also because of the institution, SATP, where the celebration takes place. Uh, in 78, I was still in college, uh, I, um, I, encounter, I just you know, bumped into this book on time and phenomena in solids. Uh, as a matter of fact, I actually bought a officially, officially pirated copy uh, in Russian. At that time, Russia wasn't a member of uh, uh, the copyright convention, so it was like two rubles or something like that. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a, actually quite amazing uh, collection of papers. Uh, <coughs> the table of contents was reading like uh, who is who in uh, condensed matter physics. Actually, some of people are here. Uh, and uh, incidentally, uh, one of the, these were lectures uh, given uh, in 67 uh, at a NATO uh, Advanced Study Institute. Uh, and one of the uh, organizers of this school was Stig Munkvist, uh, who also published this collection. And as, as it happens, 67 was the year when Lundqvist, Lundqvist started to uh, the program of condensed matter, condensed matter physics uh, at ICTP. Uh, and since then, uh, he really put his vigor uh, into creating a very vivid uh, program. And people who came to ICTP once kept coming, and it's a really great place to be. And this conference is obviously a point in case. Uh, one of the papers there uh, kind of captured my uh, imagination. It was about tunneling anomalies, and that's the first time I've heard about zero bias anomalies. It was an experimental paper with some, at that time, uh, unclear uh, zero bias peak in tunneling conductance. Uh, but the thing is that uh, these lectures were uh, given in 67. Uh, I got this book <laughs> accidentally in 78, uh, and it was kind of too late because in a year, uh, some smart and nimble people kind of scooped the cream uh, of the problem. Uh, but uh, my affection for uh, Fermi singularity physics and the zero bias anomalies kind of remains since then. Uh, and every time there is some excuse for it, so now this, this excuse is Marana states, which are inherently zero energy states. Uh, so that basically brings me to uh, the subject of my talk. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, Marana states, uh, uh, which possibly can be formed uh, in a superconductor, uh, which is doped by uh, magnetic impurities. So this. Uh, a few papers that we wrote together with Felix van Oppen and his uh, students, Yang Peng and uh, Falko Pianka. Uh, so here is the outline. Uh, I'll, I'll tell a little bit about motivation uh, that uh, is a prediction of modern states and a very simple uh, uh, contraption. Uh, and uh, I will not tell, tell much about observations. I will not overlap with the next talk. Uh, but I'll tell a little bit uh, about some other uh, implementations uh, of the suggested systems uh, for engineered Majoranas. Uh, and for that, I will need to discuss in more detail uh, the uh, so-called Chiba states, uh, the electronic states formed by a single magnetic impurity in superconductor. Then I proceed to discussing chains of Chiba states, and that uh, will uh, lead us to the notion of P-wave superconductivity along the chain and Majorana states. So that's basically the, the plan. Uh, so, uh, the, the subject of Majorana states uh, in condensed matter flared up uh, when it was realized that one may try to make a system which is made of more or less conventional materials uh, and sort of engineer these exotic uh, quantum states. Uh, so, in these two papers, uh, uh, what was suggested is to uh, take a uh, one-dimensional quantum wire uh, with spin-orbit interaction. And spin-orbit term <coughs> kind of displaces the parabolic dispersion relations 
uh, for the electrons <laughs> so that uh, the two species, two spin species, uh, have different minima uh, in momentum space. And then put uh, such a wire in proximity with superconductor. And in these papers, there was the simplest version of proximity effect where one thinks about only pairs being able to tunnel into superconductor and back, but not single electrons. So uh, kind of single electron processes were already, were already uh, taken out, integrated out, and the effect of Hamiltonian was written as a pair tunneling. Uh, so this description is good actually for energies uh, well below the gap in the host superconductor. <laughs> and the proximity term would uh, induce uh, gaps uh, around the Fermi level at all the momenta. Now, if we, in addition, include magnetic field uh, acting uh, along some other direction, so it doesn't commute uh, with the spin orbit term, uh, then uh, it's homogeneous field, so it affects only k equals zero states. Uh, and it competes uh, with equal conductivity, and upon increasing B, uh, it closes the gap at P equals zero, and then gap reopens, uh, but actually uh, this opening corresponds to creation of a P-wave superconductor, where uh, basically spins are almost uh, aligned along the same direction because of the storm, but still there are some spin orbits that skew them, and that allows proximity effect uh, and some induced superconductivity. Turns out it's P-wave, uh, and one may expect some exotic states at the interface between P and S wave superconductors. So that was uh, this initial idea in, in this sequence of works. And then it was realized that one can uh, do away uh, uh, with the uh, spin orbit. And for that, uh, uh, one needs a, a helical uh, magnetic field instead of just homogeneous field. So if one takes just uh, conventional p squared over 2m dispersion relation, no spin orbit, and imposes uh, a, a rotating in space magnetic field, then by a simple unitary transformation, basically a gauge transformation, one can exclude uh, the rotation of the field and map this Hamiltonian onto the one that I have just shown with a homogeneous field in this new rotating frame and uh, some term that looks like uh, spin orbit interaction term. So KH here is a pitch of the helix uh, created by magnetic field. So again, the result is that one forms a 1D PV superconductor at the ends of such a 1D uh, system because of the non-trivial topological structure of P-wave superconductor. <coughs> there must be uh, zero energy states, Marana states. And uh, that was uh, realized by a number of groups by Daniel Loss, uh, Carla Binekers and uh, uh, Carson Flensberg's group uh, in Copenhagen. So next level uh, in this saga was uh, to, um, uh, towards implementation was taken by uh, the Princeton group, collaboration between Bernevik and uh, Alias Dynas groups. And uh, basically the idea was to replace external field by Zeeman, uh, the, the external field that couples by Zeeman energy, uh, replace it with, uh, with magnetic ions, uh, which would couple by exchange interaction uh, to the ethereal electrons. So basically this B here uh, is a magnetic moment uh, of an ion number N, uh, and the rest is exactly like in the previous uh, discussion. So basically they had kind of tight binding uh, model with nearest hubs uh, modeling, uh, modeling the bent electrons, uh, some proximity, uh, and uh, magnetic field, effective magnetic field induced by uh, ions, uh, uh, magnetic moments. So again, one can just take what, uh, all, everything that is known for wires and conclude that there must be Marana state. So that was kind of a step for, towards uh, experimental realization. And uh, then uh, indeed experiment came from the same group uh, in Princeton. So it turns out actually that uh, uh, ions, uh, uh, iron atoms that were embedded into lead uh, like to order themselves uh, ferromagnetically. And actually the distance between them is quite small. It's almost at the level of the uh, interatomic distance in lead. 
uh, so it's ferromagnetic, not helical, but it's not a big deal because actually uh, uh, lead is uh, a heavy element, so there is strong spin orbit, and uh, the surface breaks uh, the uh, the uh, inversion symmetry, so spin orbit uh, indeed produces something like rush but term. Uh, so in this respect, uh, the combination of spin orbit uh, and uh, the uh, polarization, fermentic polarization works like uh, roughly like a wire with spin orbit interaction uh, placed in a homogeneous magnetic field. So one expects Majoranas. Uh, and again, uh, you may think that this deep in the density of states around zero, uh, which corresponds to the spectrum taken somewhere in the middle of the wire, uh, is a P-wave gap. Okay, it's not a very well uh, pronounced, but still. Uh, and um, if spectrum is taken at the edge of the wire at the end, <coughs> then there is some bump here, uh, which is zero bias anomaly, and hopefully it can be associated with a Marana state. Now, these are color plots for conductance at different biases uh, as a function of position along the wire. And as you see, at zero bias, indeed, uh, the conductance flares up just at the end of the wire, of this chain of items, just at the end. And it's good and bad, because on one hand, it's a localized state, uh, but on the other hand, it's actually too localized, because the localization is just few atomic spacings and the uh, coherence length in lead uh, is much larger, about 100 times larger. So it's not clear how, how these two things are compatible, that uh, the gap uh, is narrow, uh, but the state is strongly localized. Okay, so that seems strange, uh, and it caused some quite strong statements at first and more cautious statements. So essentially, uh, what I want to say is that uh, without making any conclusion whether the observation does indicate or does not indicate existence of Marana states, uh, I want to tell that these two things are fully compatible. And for that, basically, we had to, uh, um, to develop a bit more the model uh, and to abandon this uh, wire uh, thinking <laughs> where you think only about the pairs tunneling into superconductor and consider uh, the formation of the electronic states along the chain of atoms uh, in a more, on a more microscopic basis. And that uh, brings me to this U-shaped Rosin of states uh, that are formed by uh, magnetic ions. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll briefly tell about the models that we are using. So it's basically it's Anderson impurity model in which uh, the uh, atomic shell of a, a magnetic <laughs> ion is partially filled, uh, but Coulomb repulsion uh, prohibits uh, putting more electrons on the shell when the atom is embedded uh, into a metallic host. Uh, so if hybridization is infinitely small, then we still have a discrete level for additional electron above the Fermi level and a whole level below the Fermi level. Now, if one puts uh, in a finite hybridization, then the levels, of course, broaden up. Uh, there are some resonant widths uh, proportional to uh, the coupling squared. And uh, uh, what Anderson did, uh, he just wrote the mean field equations for the magnetization of the, uh, of the shell of the uh, magnetic atom and looked at the non-trivial solutions of the midfield equations, and uh, the atom in the midfield approximation retains uh, its, its magnetization as long as uh, the width is small enough compared to the repulsion, and, and the level is not uh, too far away so that uh, this one goes, goes up, or, the, or it's not too, too close to the Fermi level, okay? So basically, this region, uh, of the positions of the levels uh, and of their widths uh, is good for uh, retaining uh, magnetic properties of an ion hybridized uh, with a non-magnetic host. So I assume that we are somewhere here in safe region where gamma, the level width is much less than U. And just for uh, convenience for pedagogical purposes, I'll assume that uh, the, uh, the energy ED is, uh, is positive, so this, this level is further away from the Fermi level 
rather than this one from the Fermi level. So, but it doesn't matter much. So, sorry, this one is closer to Fermi level than this one, but this doesn't matter much, it's just for convenience. So this is the basic uh, model that we are using. Now let's look at some unrealistic case when uh, the level width is very narrow, and it will be, to start with, uh, even more narrow than the gap in superconductor. At the same time, one more unrealistic assumption, position of the level I will take so close to the Fermi level that this distance is less than the gap in superconductor, okay? So still we have, without superconductivity, we have a broadened uh, particle level and broadened Fermi, uh, and broadened uh, uh, hole level. Now we introduce superconductivity, and that means that uh, there are no available states in the bulk in some strip of energies equal to delta, and therefore the atomic level uh, has uh, no bulk states to hybridize with. So it used to be broadened without superconductivity, but due to superconductivity, uh, the broadening will go away, and that will be a dis discrete level. Okay, so basically one thing the superconductivity does is that uh, this atomic level remains discrete if it's very close uh, to the Fermi level. But now, one more step. Suppose uh, I have some magic wand and I can increase uh, the energy ED so uh, this uh, level is pushed up and becomes a resonance. And the trivial thing is that the discrete level still remains in the gap uh, and uh, uh, it's so-called uh, Shiba state. It's bound state uh, inside the gap, uh, and it's well below the resonance formed by the bare uh, uh, atomic level. Now, there are various ways to explain why it happens. I will uh, do it in a very sloppy way, just alluding to the level repulsion. So, in, superconduct in, in a superconductor, the density of states diverges at the gap. So, there is sort of a level can, you can imagine there is a level at delta, or there are lots of levels with energies close to delta. And now, when we put in an atom uh, with a discrete level, uh, there is uh, avoided crossing uh, between the atomic level and uh, this divergent at delta uh, set of levels uh, in a superconductor. And that basically brings about a discrete level split off uh, the uh, position of the singularity in the density of states. So there is a bump in the density of states at the position of the bare atomic level, but in addition to it, there is a discrete level due to level repulsion, which is split off uh, due to the uh, uh, hybridization, uh, and uh, the splitting is proportional to some high power <coughs> of hybridization parameter. Actually, it's uh, power uh, uh, eight, right? So gamma is t squared, so it's power eight. Uh, now, if you look at the composition of the, uh, of the wave function uh, that corresponds to this local state, it contains, of course, some contribution from the D level, but it's a, it's a minuscule contribution if this level is high. And mostly, uh, this Shiba state is composed from the quasiparticle states. It's a superposition of quasiparticle states, and therefore, it's slowly decaying in space. So the Shiba state decays in space as one over R, uh, up to some large distances controlled by superconductivity. Uh, so, now, uh, if I increase uh, the position of the, uh, uh, of the atomic level, then, as I said, Shiba level goes up. Uh, the wave function uh, here, when the level is close to the Fermi level, is almost uh, all in on the atomic level. But when I go away, uh, the contribution of the D level goes down, as I already said. And this picture actually remains even if gamma is large. So, uh, if I make a more realistic assumption about large gamma over delta. Turns out that this uh, uh, curve becomes more shallow, but essentially it's the same. It just saturates at higher values of D plus U. <laughs> and what's important is that the uh, contribution of D level becomes always small. Even if the level is close to the Fermi level, still the wave function is mostly uh, of the Shiba state is mostly due to the quasiparticles rather than the D level of the, uh, of the atom. So one may have this mental picture that uh, electrons have very easy time to hop uh, away from the D level to the superconductor, okay? They cannot go away at an infinite distance because of the gap. But uh, the larger the ratio gamma over delta, 
uh, the more they are delocalized. Okay, so basically there is a, uh, a kind of a, a cloud of electron that is formed around uh, d atom, but electron lives, lives mostly outside outside uh, the atom at energies uh, uh, below the gap at Shiba state energies. Now, technically, if I look at this limit at uh, U Shiba Rosinov case, then basically what one needs to do is to solve Schrodinger equation with delta function potential. Uh, the little uh, difference from usual textbook or quantum mechanics is that the wave function here is a, uh, is a column of four numbers, uh, two for uh, spin up, spin down, and two for the particle hole uh, components, so so-called Nambu space. Uh, and uh, one can solve uh, this equation to get uh, the Shiba states as a function of the control parameter, which is exchange interaction times density of states. And uh, one can see that uh, by changing gamma, one can tune the position of uh, the Shiba state from delta through zero to minus delta. So there is some quantum phase transition when the level crosses uh, the chemical potential. Now, the wave functions corresponding to the, uh, to the Shiba state, okay, the states are doubled because of the structure of uh, BDG equations, but basically, these are spinners, it's spin up uh, for psi plus and spin down for psi minus, and these two components correspond to particles and holes. Now, uh, basically, this solution that was developed in, uh, in this seminal papers that I mentioned, she, uh, Yushiba and Rosinov, independently, can be generalized for the case of a chain and uh, basically, this method is, is long known from nuclear physics in the 50s, uh, what, uh, and it's described in these two lines. So basically, you pretend to solve the equation by Fourier transform, then do inverse Fourier transform, and form out of the differential equation a form uh, a system of equations uh, which is foreign by foreign matrix uh, with a kernel that depends on the spectral parameter, E, and the properties uh, of this matrix basically define the entire spectrum, uh, including the continuum, uh, and the Shiba states. Now, uh, suppose we tune the Shiba states close to the uh, Fermi level. So I press this gamma to zero, to, to one, sorry. Uh, <coughs> then the Shiba states are well uh, separate from the continuum. Uh, and uh, what we can do if you look at the, um, at the set of states with energies uh, well below the gap, we can project the entire Hilbert space onto the uh, linear combination of the Shiba states. So now we have to adjust uh, the Shiba states for each atom, uh, and we assume that atoms uh, have different polarizations, say they are in helix, and suppose there is no spin orbit in the host, okay? So let's, let's look at a simple situation when there is no spin orbit in the host, but uh, the atoms are indeed helically arranged, uh, arranged in terms of spins. So then basically the uh, axis of quantization is, uh, is uh, individual for each of the uh, spinners, for each, uh, uh, for each of the sites, and one has to replace uh, the wave functions with the corresponding uh, wave functions which are adjusted to the proper uh, uh, axis of quantization. So now, out of this set of states, we can form linear combination, uh, project uh, this huge matrix onto the space, and that uh, leads basically to a tight binding Hamiltonian for electrons moving along the chain. So one important thing about the tight binding Hamiltonian is that there are long-range hopes, uh, because as I said, the Shiba states are very slowly decaying. Even at distances less than psi, the decay is one over r. So here is uh, this tight binding equation. Uh, again, it's two by two matrix. Uh, these are hopping matrix elements, and these are pairings, uh, or induced superconductivity matrix elements. And as you see, uh, uh, both decay, uh, hopping and pairing decay is one over x. And now your eyes attracted probably to this sign. Uh, that uh, manifests the P wave nature of superconductivity. So first of all, you can see that uh, there, are no, there is no pairing for the same site if I equals J sign is zero. And if I, if I permute I and J, uh, the induced gap changes sign. So now it's easy to understand where it comes from. Because basically, uh, the, uh, on each uh, side, there is a place only for electron with a, with a given spin. So say for, for this guy, uh, the spin should be up, and for this one, it should look somewhat sideways. Now we take a pair uh, from a superconductor, a Cooper pair, which is in S-wave superconductivity, uh, is a singlet. 
and try to put such a state uh, onto available space, uh, uh, available states. And the problem will be that uh, this state will be orthogonal to this one if there is no uh, some finite angle with uh, z axis. So this projection is not zero only if there is some pitch in the helix uh, uh, of the uh, uh, formed by the magnetic ions. So uh, that basically is the origin of this uh, sine kh uh, xij uh, function, and it's, it's clear because of the structure of the spin one half wave function that sine should change uh, the way this, the, this function throws. So uh, let's maybe try to uh, do some simple estimates, and uh, in the rest I will uh, I will talk about helical arrangement. But uh, as we discussed in the very beginning, there is a mapping between the helical arrangement of atoms uh, and uh, ferromagnetic arrangement of atoms with spin orbit in the bulk. So I will uh, change, I will interchangeably use uh, the two languages, uh, and uh, the translation is here. So basically, uh, the product of the pitch vector times the distance between magnetic atoms uh, should be thought of as some effective uh, spin orbit angle. Uh, and this is the basic translation between the two uh, systems, for, for languages between the two systems. So now, uh, let's try to make some estimates. So first of all, uh, out of the symmetric elements which correspond to low range hoppings, let's look just at the nearest neighbor's hopping. So I replace this x by the distance between magnetic atoms, a, and uh, I'll get the typical bandwidth for the hubs. It's delta divided by KFA. Uh, so now, uh, if I have uh, the bandwidth and I know the brilliant vector, which is uh, given by 1 over A, I can estimate the typical velocity in the band. Uh, and that will be uh, delta over KF, right? Because A cancels out. So this characteristic velocity. Now, let's look at the induced superconductivity. I'll do the same uh, kind of brute force crude estimates, replace x by a, uh, and as a result, I'll get the induced P wave gap uh, as delta divided by KFA times uh, the sine of the spin orbit angle. OK, so now uh, it, we're almost done, because if I look at the characteristic uh, correlation lengths uh, in the induced uh, superconductor along the chain, I have to divide the effective Fermi velocity by the induced gap. And as you see, delta cancels out. So what we get as a result uh, is a distance between magnetic atoms divided by the spin orbit angle. If it's small, then we can just forget about sine and just write alpha. So basically, the key point here is that the effective velocity for motion along the magnetic chain uh, is, is not the Fermi velocity in the bulk. And uh, it, it comes from this combination of uh, tunneling events uh, from magnetic atom into the, uh, into the uh, conduction band uh, of a superconductor and moving uh, of the Shiba state along the chain. Uh, so that's uh, basically uh, uh, all about the estimates. Now one can do a more detailed theory, of course, because uh, after all, it uh, uh, can be solved, uh, the Hamilton can be solved by phase transform, and one can get the full phase diagram in terms of the position of the Shiba level of individual impurity and Fermi wave vector. And, and uh, depending on the ratio of the pitch uh, wave vector and KF, uh, there's uh, no topological state here because uh, there are more than one crossings for each direction of K uh, in this case. Or if uh, the uh, KH made smaller, uh, then uh, there uh, may be a single crossing. Uh, uh, and uh, that gives rise to topological state. Uh, so uh, there are actually two topological states depending on the particular position of the uh, Shiba level above or below the, Fermi, uh, below the Fermi level. These both have non-trivial index. Uh, and again, I will not dwell on calculation, but we just can calculate by standard means the top index and it's plus or minus one uh, for uh, these two parts of the topological states uh, and it's zero uh, for this part. OK, so now, uh, what about Majoranas? Uh, if we go through the transition, uh, again, as I said, there is no Majorana state in the, in the trivial topological state. And there is, a, there is some quantum phase transition when uh, the border is crossed. Uh, the transition basically 
comes as the vanishing of this uh, central part of the band structure and forming of the band structure of this type. And uh, uh, in topological phase, uh, there is a bound state at the edge of the uh, chain of atoms. Now, the, uh, the hubs are long-ranged. Therefore, uh, it's naive to expect a strong localization of uh, Marana states on the theory ground. Uh, and indeed, what we find analytically is the decay of the wave function at, long, at large distances is 1 over x log squared. So it's a very slow decay. And the scale here is given by the detuning from the, uh, the phase transition point. And it looks relatively terrible, but it turns out actually that it's a very distant asymptote. And uh, if one looks numerically at solution at all distances, uh, this asymptote comes only after a rapid decay of the wave function uh, with the scale that I just introduced, uh, A over sine alpha SO, uh, over several decades. So basically, if there is a small parameter uh, which is spin orbit angle, then there is a number of atoms in the chain uh, <coughs> over which uh, the wave function decays uh, exponentially uh, with uh, this uh, rate. So there are localized states along the, such a chain. Now, uh, the drawback of the models that I discussed so far is that it needs fine tuning. I started with telling that we think of shipper states uh, finely tuned to the Fermi level. And uh, there is no reason to expect it because we are talking about uh, basically atomic energies, right? So the embedded atom has typical level, level spacings of electron volts. And the, the width of the level is also about electron volt and it's somewhere there. Okay, and then we want to tune Shiba level to the Fermi level. So it doesn't seem very realistic. Uh, and uh, what I think uh, saves the situation is in experiment, actually, uh, iron atoms are closely spaced. And that means that instead of, uh, you know, separate uh, uh, Anderson impurities, there's a chain. And there are hubs between the D levels of separate atoms, and it forms a band. And the band may be more wide than the distance between the level and the Fermi level. Then the bottom of the band will be filled by electrons. Uh, and uh, as uh, I said, uh, it does require such a fine tuning. So now the tuning is in EV range rather than MEV, right? So the only thing that we need is that the bandwidth is order of EV. Now, on top of that, also atoms are ferromagnetic, but as I said, also, uh, this is uh, in terms of, it's morally the same as having no spin orbit interaction, uh, as having spin orbit interaction and uh, uh, it's, it's the same as uh, having no spin orbit interaction, sorry, and, and, and skewed positions, uh, skewed uh, orientations of the metric moments of ions. So once again, in the real material, uh, it's lead and it's strong spin orbit, and ions are ferromagnetic. We may do the unit transformation, uh, get rid of spin orbit interaction uh, at the expense of twisting the atoms uh, into helical arrangement of metric moments. Uh, so now I can repeat again the estimates for the uh, 1D band parameters. So here, uh, as I said, the bandwidth is W. It overlaps between the D levels. Uh, and therefore, the bare velocity would be the distance between magnetic atoms times uh, the bandwidth. So it will be huge, actually. But once again, we look at states which occupy the energy space below the gap. For these states... Uh, the time electron spends on D level is small. It's delta over gamma. And that effectively reduces the hopping attempt frequency. So effectively, it uh, uh, reduces the Fermi velocity down by a factor delta over gamma. So now we're getting in business. So the effective Fermi velocity is low. Uh, and uh, for now, as you see, I considered uh, hubs between the irons and I neglected the hubs through the bulk that I considered before when I looked at super states. Now, the rest is the same. The induced superconductivity, uh, the gap is of the order of delta times alpha. And the ratio uh, uh, which determines the coherence length is, again, delta independent. So it depends on the parameter of the chain, uh, on the width of the band arranged by the metric atoms, uh, on the uh, um, hybridization parameter 
and spin orbit angle. Uh, so this estimate actually fits well with the one I had before if the width of the band for irons is of the order of the uh, width of the levels of individual iron atoms. So that basically uh, explains why the correlation length, which also determines the Shiba state decay, uh, is, uh, remains short also in the limit of uh, overlapping atoms. Now, just a couple of slides telling that uh, we can go, well, we went beyond the estimates. So the idea is that uh, we basically repeat uh, what uh, Anderson and, uh, and Shiba did, uh, but for a chain of atoms. So we start with a Hamiltonian that includes uh, the D atoms, superconductor and hybridization, apply mean field, uh, then uh, in, uh, introduce hybridization to form a matrix equation for the green functions. Uh, and it's eight by eight matrix because we include the D states. Then we can exclude the D states and reduce it to four, four by four, by, four n by four matrix for the itinerant electrons. And that will introduce the self energy into the green functions for the itinerant electrons. And the self energy has a large, uh, a strong uh, 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 frequency dispersion at small frequencies. It's this gamma over delta term that in turn uh, suppresses the Z factor uh, in the green function. And that's basically what renormalizes the Fermi velocity uh, from VF down to VF times delta over gamma. So that's basically the mechanics how uh, the uh, delta drops out from final answers. So and then the rest is kind of very technical, well, simple technical thing. Uh, you reduce uh, this system further to 2n by 2n by, uh, by proper uh, projection on polarized uh, states, spin polarized states, and then discrete, discrete Fourier transform uh, yields uh, a dispersion relation, which uh, has all the terms that I uh, kind of uh, uh, alluded to before. So there is a term corresponding to the hubs along the chain. Uh, there is a term that corresponds to hubs through superconductors. There's no local hubs, uh, which correspond to the K one over R of Shiba states. Uh, there is uh, renormalization of velocity coming from this term. And finally, uh, the induced gap coming from this one. So all the ingredients that could be understood on the hand waving level are in the exact, well, mean field exact equation. And using it, one can find spectrum excitations, density of states, then write it in real space and find Marana states. So that's basically the end of the kind of scientific part. And here is a just picture. So uh, one can again plot the diagram in the same, basically in the same variables. Vertical axis is super state position, and this is the bandwidth uh, of overlapping uh, irons. And again, there are two uh, topological and trivial uh, sectors with topological index plus and minus one. Uh, the spectrum uh, of uh, quasi particles in the one dimensional band uh, also bear a signature of the physics that we discussed. So the flat, the, the flat parts of the band actually correspond to uh, unescapability of the Shiba level from the, uh, from the gap. So this approach of the level to the gap comes. Uh, is, uh, is responsible for the flat part of the spectrum. There are some peculiar points in the spectrum coming from the shape uh, of the band coming from the long range hops. And uh, the gap, uh, is, the new gap is proportional to delta times spin orbit angle. Now, uh, if we plot density of state out of the spectrum, uh, one limit gets away from the edge, this blue curve and these additional peaks and there are quite a few of them come from the Van Hoff singularities uh, that are due to the flat parts of the spectrum, due to the long range hubs, and due to the flattening. Uh, and at the edge, there is indeed a delta function peak. It's broadened artificially here. Now, again, we just use the parameters uh, from uh, DFT calculation uh, that was part of the experimental uh, slash theory paper uh, uh, from Yazdani and uh, McDonald's groups. And if you use these parameters, we find indeed that the decay uh, on several orders of magnitude comes uh, on a distance of order of four inter-iron distances. So that's basically the main conclusion that this decay is indeed is insensitive uh, to the gap fits in superconductor and it's just because of the velocity renormalization. Yep, excellent. So uh, looking ahead, 
Actually, uh, in experiments, in the system experiments, uh, the, 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 as I have shown in the beginning, the peaks are pretty broad. And uh, what we thought as a suggestion to future experiments is to switch to a superconducting tips. Uh, the density of certain superconductor is, is a sharp feature. And one may try to scan with a sharp feature uh, this zero bias, zero energy states. Uh, and because you, you scan a singularity with a singularity, there must be much sharper uh, conduction uh, response. Uh, and uh, what we predict is some unusual shape of the conductance peak with some universal value at the top and some width that depends in a non-analytical way on the tip to uh, substrate tunneling. Uh, so uh, you can read uh, if you want. It's published already. Well, it's, it's comment already. Uh, so the main conclusions are that uh, first uh, that the decay uh, of the uh, of the Majorana state actually, actually can be quite short uh, because of the nature of states uh, in the induced superconductor. And in future, it would be nice to have measurements with uh, superconducting STM tip. So the, the motivation for this work actually was coming from experiment, obviously. But uh, I was primed to these kind of questions uh, because I was interested uh, in uh, the effects of magnetic impurities onto uh, topological insulators. And uh, this interest came in part from discussions with Boris uh, about two, two and a half years ago. And it was very useful. Um, insightful, I would say. So I just want to finish uh, telling that I'm looking forward to uh, more insights from Boris in science uh, and nature and uh, to more uh, inspiring uh, conversations. Uh, and, and most of all, um, I'm looking forward to further guidance uh, and example uh, in the wonderful lifestyle. So with that, thank you very much and happy birthday. Thanks very much, Leonid. Uh, if there are any questions, comments, uh, just bring your hand up and I'll pass you the microphone as it's being recorded. Uh, yeah, I had a question about you use a one dimensional model, yes. uh, but in reality, the, the atoms are on a 2D surface and can. Cannot the, the, the wave function can they not localize in the, in the direction perpendicular to the chain and, and you know on a, on a much longer I, I can understand why along the chain what you say is correct but how about the direction perpendicular to the chain uh, on the surface of the or, or in the superconductor are they also localized on a much longer much shorter direction uh, right yeah it's a good question uh, yes so they we don't, have analytical, we don't have analytical formulas, uh, but uh, the localization in the, um, in the direction perpendicular is also uh, su su suppressed uh, by the same factor. Uh, so it, it's not xi in, the, in, in, the, in that direction as well. So that's, uh, comes from the same, basically from same relation velocity. Uh, I actually have two questions. One is, um, what about, uh, Andreev uh, processes for uh, uh, that in principle can give finite weights for Schieber states. Like a pair can go one uh, electron to one uh, state and another to another and uh, bring some weights and it doesn't look that it is small. Uh, you mean Schieber or Majorana? Uh, uh, no, uh, if you have two impurities. Yes. Uh, then uh, there is Andreev process which gives you finite can put weights. One and, yeah, uh, uh, find with for, for Shiba state. Yes. Absolutely. So uh, is it taken into account in your yeah, Hamiltonian? Basically, yeah, good. So, so the, the, essentially, if you want, the bandwidth uh, of Shiba states that for, is formed by a chain is this process. Uh, it is Andreev process. Uh, no, but uh, there is also a real process. I mean, there is finite lifetime 
Uh, well, in a chain, I mean, where, where would you go? I mean, uh, there is a gap in superconductor, right? So you can only take a pair from electrons uh, localized onto, onto super states and put into superconductor with energy equals zero, right? Because there is only condensate there. So therefore, there is no um, lifetime. Uh, there is no bus, if you wish, uh, available. Uh, only if you couple this chain to something else, to normal leads. But, but is there conservation of total spin or something like that, which uh, is in your Hamiltonian? Uh, no, there is no conservation of spin orbit, so spin is not there, uh. sure. But, but main thing, the main thing is basically there is a gap, so there is no states available outside this chain. That's, that's the main thing. And second question is about bogolyubov yes. Uh How uh, good is this approximation in the vicinity of the uh, impurity? Yeah. It's not good at all. <laughs> yeah, we cannot go to, to the atomic distance, of course, yeah. So some k far over r is not valid for atomic distances. So the, um, the experiment, experimental trace from Yazdani that you showed showed quite a bit of width. Is that temperature strongly temperature dependent, or is that zero temperature? Yeah, so thanks for the question. It's, uh, uh, there was lots of commotion about it. So uh, probably yes. And the temperature in his experiment uh, was uh, above 4 Kelvin, actually. Lead allows it, because lead has TC 10 something. So, so they weren't cold at all. So probably it's temperature. Now, uh, there are uh, better, not for Marens, but for Shiba states, actually now there are better experiments from uh, uh, university, uh, from Free University in Berlin, Katharina Franke, who is one of Penn's colleague. And actually she does use the uh, superconducting tip. So with, with that you can even evade, I mean, evade temperature. Even at fine temperature you, you adjust the resonances so that, uh, and apparently the natural width of the levels is, is uh, much smaller. Uh, and it's good, and, well, it's, it's, prob it's good for science. Whether it's good for the confirmation, it's not clear because there is a forest of states. I mean, uh, for two impurities, there are way more states that you would expect, you know, from naive considerations. Another question, comment? Uh, in that case, we was. I think it's so No, so you've got to use the I can amplify, you can check. <laughs> so you use a mean field approximation um, for this Anderson type impurities. Uh, is this just the justification for that, that you just know these atoms are magnetic, or would there be anything beyond mean field? Um, yeah, so uh, that's, it's also a kind of pressing question. So, in principle, uh, uh, in one over S, you, you, you can justify it for large spins. Uh, and uh, that's basically what we had in our minds without checking much. Uh, now, if you take into account a uh, finite value of spin and, and even do the projection uh, on the lower energy space uh, so that you assume that atom does retain uh, its spin. But then, due to the quantum of spin, you have Conda effect. Uh, now, to, to my understanding is that uh, it's not that terrible because basically uh, you can think of replacing uh, exchange constant, well, J nu, by Conda temperature. And the estimates probably remain the same. But fully quantum mechanical problem uh, for single Shiba state, there are lots of papers now. Not lots, but okay, around of 10. Um, and there are some experiments, actually. Uh, but for, even for a for couple of impurities, uh, so, that, so the two impurity problem that is well known for normal metal is not uh, discussed yet for superconductors. So the fully quantum problem is not addressed yet, uh, even at the level when you have spins. And, and, and putting uh, kind of live D levels is even further uh, step up. Okay, well, thank you very much. We, we now have a break and we resume at 11.30. Thank you very much.